Greetings one and all, and welcome to this one-off special of Plague Inc. Evolved with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome to a bit of a sadistic video. In today's episode, we are coming back to the glorious game of Plague Inc. Evolved to see just how aggressive we can be with the humble bacterium. I have a bit of a sadistic itch at the moment, and would very much love to see the world once again perish in a hail of disease and and plague. And as such, we're going to do just that. The whole point of today is to see just how aggressive you can be with the bacteria, damning the consequences of being found out early, and perhaps becoming lethal far too quickly. Now for those who are regulars of the channel, it's been a very long time since I have covered this game, so I certainly understand if you're a little bit lost. The basic premise of this game is you have a disease of various types, bacteria, virus, fungus, neurax worm, parasite, prion, necrovirus, that's that's right, zombies, nanovirus, bioweapon, and the simian flu, based off the lovely Rising of the Apes. And ignoring the coughing fit just then, which I think is very fitting, with all of these types of disease you can go about and destroy humanity, upgrading your disease as you collect DNA by spreading to new countries, killing certain amounts of people, and doing all manner of stuff like that. And normally, you have to be a little bit stealthy. In Mega Brutal, like we're going to be playing today, you're normally a little bit less stealthy because being stealthy is too slow and things get expensive over time, but we're going to just be completely unstealthy today. We're just going to be killing people because that's what this game is about and that's what I would like to do. For people who are used to playing Inc. Evolved, I am choosing these genetic codes. The Metabolic Jump, because it gives you a little bonus at the start and a massive bonus when you start spreading horribly. Darwinist, because free evolutions are free evolutions. Suppression, because going over closed land borders, I start to find a little bit more worth it. But saying that, because of how aggressive we're being. I think we're going to go with Aquasite instead. Let's spread along the seas and try to get to Greenland fairly quickly. Extremophile, meaning we have a minor bonus in all environments. Nowhere is safe from our horrid disease. And finally, Symptostasis. We are easier to cure because once again, damn the consequences, but our symptoms are going to be so, so much cheaper. Let's go with Mega Brutal, and we have a new randomizer here. Let's see if we can find something in the oozing illness. Sure, that sounds reasonable. And here we go, welcome to Plague Inc. You are a new bacteria. To win, you must evolve and spread across the world, wiping out all humans in the ultimate plague. And of course, now we get to select our start location, which will be Saudi Arabia. The reason being, it gives you heat resistance, starting off in hot country, which I find a little bit more valuable than cold resistance overall. It has fantastic flight paths and is near some really densely populated areas. And again, flight paths really, really helpful. Now before we start, I am going to briefly talk about the game, very, very briefly. So as we play the game, I will be evolving certain traits with the DNA I get from spreading to certain countries or killing people. These can be spent in a myriad of ways, things like air, water transmission, rashes, nausea, coughing, leading to some really quite unpleasant symptoms. These will all alter our lethality, severity, and and infectivity, with a few exceptions like resistance. The idea is infectivity will make you spread more, which is fairly obvious. Severity will make you more obvious, but will also give you more DNA when you spread to a new area. And lethality does exactly what it says on the tin. It's how much you're going to be killing people who you've infected. And we continue. Now we've just started off in Saudi Arabia, which means we get the lovely red bubble. Those will appear every time we go to a new land. The first few areas we should infect are places like Iraq, the Middle East, Egypt, and Iran. Occasionally we will go to Africa first, but that sometimes doesn't happen. Of course, I'm speaking of East Africa, I am aware where Egypt is on the map. We currently have three DNA from just existing, and so we are going to evolve a rash. Now the rash isn't particularly powerful, but it does start off a nice line 
which ends in skin lesions and then necrosis. Necrosis, of course, being far, far more fearsome. Skin lesions, a breakdown in the epidermis, causes large open wounds, which significantly increases infectivity, giving us a massive infectivity bonus and a rather large severity bonus. Honestly, I'm mostly after the infectivity, but the severity will be fueling our efforts. We are going to be so aggressive, though, I do have a feeling we will lose, but we will lose spectacularly. Okay, there we go, we now have 9 DNA, so let's pause the game and get ourselves skin lesions. After that, we could get necrosis. Tissue loses blood supply and becomes vital sources of gangrene. Decomposed bodies remain a vector of transmission. So it kills people, rather effectively in fact. It's remarkably severe and a little bit infectious, but that last little bit is amazing. Even the dead remain infectious, and that does come into play in the game. Normally, the dead simply aren't infectious. If you have necrosis, they are. So a dead population will continue to infect the living. Although they will put in countermeasures against this, it will always help out quite a bit. However, it's a little bit too aggressive. Now I know, I know, we should go full aggression, but I also want to win. I want a chance of winning, so going to this instantly really cripples our chances. So instead, we're going to be a bit more innocent. We are coughing. The poor people infected, which are currently 130, 180 people now, are currently coughing, they have rashes and skin lesions. Oh, and of course they're sweating constantly into their lesions, which I'm sure would sting a little bit. Isn't that glorious? Now, we have almost enough, so next we are going to go with air level 1. The reason being, this will increase the rate of us getting on planes. Currently, we've got on none, because we only have a very small amount of the population infected. The chance of us spreading is fairly minimal. As soon as I say that, we have spread to East Africa, and now we are also getting air level 1, increasing our chance to get on airplanes. I was about to say, I was about to say airships then, for some reason, so tripping over words already, the sign of a ill and very aggressive Lathrix. We have spread to Iceland and somewhere else, although I wasn't quite paying attention, where else have we spread? We are currently in Egypt, Iraq, East Africa, Iceland and Saudi Arabia. And for free, we just got nausea. So people are now nauseous, and just for the fun of it, people are now vomiting horribly. Whilst being in insomniacs, that's always good. Now, do we want to make them paranoid? Uh, likely not, at least not yet. We will, however, make them anemic, and we will also start causing cysts for a tiny little burst in both severity and effectivity, and to set up some things later. The next thing we are going to get is cold resistance, so we can continue to spread in the colder regions of the world, such as Iceland, which we have already infected. Ooh, and we've also just infected Russia. We really need that cold resistance now. Cold 1 and cold 2. Speed up time a little bit here, until we can get drug resistance, and then we are spreading rapidly and fairly effectively. We do want drug resistance too, however, since we are on Mega Brutal. The idea of drug resistance is that wealthy regions are less and less effective at dealing with our delicious, delicious plague. However, Saudi Arabia has now started work on the cure, and as such, our poor oozing illness will start to be cured soon. Or at least, the cure bar will come up here in the bottom right. If that gets to 100%, we simply lose. The end. Our disease was not good enough to survive on this lovely, lovely earth of ours. There we are, drug resistance level 2, and now I will get water level 1 as well, meaning we are very likely to get onto boats. I want Russia infected as soon as possible on a side note. Projectile vomiting symptom combo. Coughing and vomiting are causing the infected to projectile vomit, increasing the infectivity of oozing illness. And because I am the creator of this disease, I am a patron of the god Nurgle, I think it's only fair to say the, the vomit will be a delicious deep green because it's my choice and I want it to be a deep green so it will be a deep green lots of flies is already infected and we are going to go for water level 2 we are still being fairly aggressive but not as aggressive as I originally wanted but now I am seeing a victory oh, but I do want to be more aggressive we could go with okay so here's a risk if we go with necrosis now we will infect everywhere very very quickly however Places will start to shut down their borders, their seaports, and their airports. 
and I think it's worth it. The infected are now going necrotic. Gangrene for everyone. The first death has been recorded in Saudi Arabia. We have now killed 12,000, 24,000, 31,000. The death rate is going up fairly quickly. And we have infected pretty much everywhere except for Madagascar and Greenland. The two most difficult places to infect. We have a lot of extra DNA now, so we're going to go with air level 2 and extreme bio aerosol. We are now incredibly likely to get onto planes and onto boats. And to finish it off, let's go with a little bit of bacterial resistance. This means that the cold and the heat really don't bother us. UK is leading the cure effort. Well done. Come on, we just need one boat to go to Greenland, and we are not completely ruined. Perfect. Thank you very much, Norway. Norway, the vector of disease. Truly a patron to Nurgle, the god of all things foul. I'm very, very happy with that. So everywhere is currently getting infected, and because of that, let's just pause the game for a second. Every country has at least one infected person. And so we can end their miserable existence with a little bit of mercy. Immune suppression. Total organ failure. Coma. Pretty much death. Um, yeah, the lethality is now extremely high. People who, who are infected are losing consciousness, which means we are much harder to cure. And because we have necrosis, everyone who dies is still infectious. And there are now a lot of dead people, as you can see by the bar at the bottom. We now have a lot of DNA, and as such, we are going to get genetic reshuffle 1, 2, and 3. The pathogen DNA strands reassembled. More work needed to develop a cure. A new strain of the pathogen now exists. There is more than one oozing illness, increasing the work needed. And finally, multiple strains now exist, increasing the work needed yet again, which will massively hamper the cure effort by 20%. Turkey is now in anarchy. The world is dying rapidly, and there's very little they can do about it. Genet genetic hardening 1 and 2 we could have got earlier if we were being a bit smarter, and perhaps if I'd played the game more recently. It simply slows down the cure effort, and there is not a single person left who is alive. And as a final insult, we have this. A massive increase in lethality. Severe loss of blood volume causes oxygen deprivation, loss of consciousness, and death. I would also like to think that the dead are becoming infectious ooze, considering our name. Now, before we finish off, we are going to quickly grab a couple more symptoms, just to make us a little bit less cured, which does apply to our final score. So we are going to grab paralysis, significantly harder to cure and can be lethal, and I don't quite have enough DNA to go down this route exactly. Sadly, yes, we needed 18 DNA for insanity because turning people insane is pretty fun. Oozing illness to eradicate all humans. At least they understand. Victory! Oozing illness has successfully eliminated all life on Earth, and we got four stars out of five. And let's watch it and fast forward, because why not? There we are in Saudi Arabia, and it will be rather rapid once we start infecting other places. So this is literally the first time playing Plague Inc. in a minimum, minimum of five or six months, and it was a lot of fun. Goodbye, Greenland. The main problem we had is we infected Greenland and some of the other islands a little bit too slow. I think I should have gone for water a little bit earlier and the cold resistance earlier as well, which would have got us one, one of the boats from Russia or Norway, I believe it was Norway in the end which sent the boat. Yes indeed, it was Norway. So people who play this game a lot know that the islands tend to be the main problem. If you can get there early, you're pretty much in for a quick and painless victory, or at least painless on your part, extremely painful on the part of those who are infected. And with that, that is the end of the episode. I just really fancied playing Plague Inc. I had a bit of a sadistic itch, like I was saying earlier, and a lot of people had been asking for it, so I thought, why not give the people what they wanted, a bit of pain and suffering? 
So thank you so much for watching. If you would like to see something specific about Plague Inc, I might be playing it more in the future, but no promises there. And I just had a lot of fun. So thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Plague Inc might be something you would like to see in the future. There are so many custom scenarios which have been made since my absence. Goodbye.